Hello, I'm Hannah Sachs, Editor-in-Chief of NEJM Evidence, and this is Stat Stat. You're considering a phone upgrade. The latest model promises significantly better battery life and sharper photos. Wow. The ad almost has you convinced, but then you notice the fine print. Hmm. The new model has a battery life that is, on average, 15 minutes longer than the old one. And just a few more pixels. Maybe those are measurable differences, but would either of those changes make a difference in your life? This question, whether a difference that is statistically significant is also clinically meaningful, comes up in research all the time. Before a trial is launched, investigators conduct a power calculation to determine the sample size needed to detect a predetermined difference between groups with a predefined type 1 error, or alpha, usually 0.05. When the results come in, investigators look to see if the observed difference between groups is statistically significant, a p-value less than 0.05. But that doesn't necessarily mean that any such difference is clinically meaningful. Addressing that question requires an understanding of what's known as the Minimal Clinically Important Difference, or MCID. The MCID is the smallest change in an outcome measure, say the difference on a point scale or difference in survival time, that would be perceived as beneficial it's about whether that difference matters to patients, or clinicians, or health systems, depending on what's being studied. Let's talk through an example. Consider a randomized placebo-controlled trial testing a new medication that aims to slow the progression of dementia. The trial randomly assigned older adults with mild cognitive impairment to receive either the new drug or placebo. The primary outcome is the mean difference at two years from baseline and performance on a cognitive scale with scores that range from 0 to 100, with higher scores indicating better function. When the results come in, patients in the new drug arm had a mean change of minus 3 points, compared with a change of minus 5 points for patients in the placebo arm. This difference is statistically significant, but you think it seems unlikely that a 2-point difference on this 100-point scale will be noticed by the person or their loved ones. But how do you know? That is, how is the MCID established? There are different methods to determine this threshold. Let's talk about two. First, the anchor-based method. This involves directly asking patients or caregivers about their perceptions to allow investigators to see what magnitude of change correlates with a patient being, say, a little worse or a lot worse. For a cognitive function scale, investigators could consider surveying caregivers and family members to assess what change on a 100-point scale correlates with a noticeable difference in a patient's memory or level of independence. An alternative is the distribution-based method. This approach uses calculations based on the distribution of the data, such as taking half a standard deviation of the baseline measure or using the standard error of measurement. These methods provide a data-driven estimate of what might be a meaningful change, but don't directly incorporate patient perceptions. Clinicians and investigators often combine elements of these approaches, using patient reports, clinical judgment, and statistical estimates to settle on a threshold that's considered clinically meaningful and then becomes agreed upon in the literature. Say, an eight-point difference on that 100-point cognitive function scale. Importantly, the MCID is context-dependent. That same eight-point difference might not apply to a related but different cognitive function scale or to a different population, say of patients with no cognitive impairment at baseline. With this MCID in mind, you go back to the sample size calculation and see that the trial was powered to detect an even smaller difference. Larger trials can generally detect smaller differences with more narrow confidence intervals. So if investigators design a trial with very large numbers of participants to find a tiny difference, they might identify statistically significant differences that just are not clinically meaningful. We want a meaningful difference, not just a statistically detectable one. So back to your phone upgrade. You think it through, survey some friends, and realize that any change in battery life would have to mean a big enough difference to get you through your entire clinic day without needing to recharge, from its current seven and a half hour battery life to nine hours or more. So the 15 extra minutes is way below the MCID. No upgrade for you. For now, you'll have to keep bringing your charger to clinic. <sighs>